Hello everybody and welcome to my first of two videos on this, the Canon FTQL. And in this video, we're going to go over what everything on the camera is. And in the second video, if you need to learn how to use this camera, we'll talk about what everything on the camera does and how it can be used in your photography. So firstly, this is an interchangeable lens, 35 millimeter SLR, and that just means the camera lens can come off and be put back on anytime when you're not taking a photo and the image won't be ruined. You shouldn't change the lenses when you're taking a photo, just for the record. It uses any 35 millimeter film you can put into it. And single lens means it has a single lens, a reflex mirror and prism housing. And you see the view, the image through here in the viewfinder until the image is taken. The meter on this camera is a 12% large area spot meter. Now what that means, a spot meter takes 100% of the meter reading off of a spot in the frame. 12% means that the central 12% of the frame, which is about the size of the glass element here in the lens, maybe just a little bit bigger, 100% of the meter reading comes off that central spot. It's actually a little bit bigger than that. There is a square in the um, viewfinder that it's not really a circle. It's a, it's a rectangle area, rectangular area. That, that rectangle is the metering area. So here's how you use that. If you have a really bright subject in the metering area and gray around it, let's say, that gray is going to turn black. If you have a really dark subject in the metering area and gray around it, that gray is going to turn white because the meter is going to read the light coming off of that central area and try to give you a reading that turns that to gray. Let's say that you're taking a picture of a person. You meter read off of their face, put it in the center, and then recompose so that their face is wherever you want it to be in the image. But you've already got your settings dialed in because this is a fully manual camera. And then after you recompose, you just take the photo and you'll have a proper exposure on that person's face. Whatever you want your subject to be, you take your meter reading off of it, dial in your settings, and then recompose the frame, and you've got a proper meter reading for that subject. It has shutter speeds of 1 second to 1 1,000th 1, plus bulb and X. X is the flash sync. We'll see that in just a minute up here. The viewfinder has 0.9x magnification and 92% vertical with 94% horizontal frame coverage. Now what that means is what you see in the viewfinder is about 90% of the size of what will reach the film. Horizontally, you're going to have 94% frame coverage, which means about three, if, this is, if what you're seeing now is what would reach the film, then about 3% on each side of the film would be lost. 92% vertical means about 4% on the top and bottom are lost in the viewfinder. They make it to the film, you just don't see it in the viewfinder. It, the focusing screen on this is a matte field screen with the metering area indicator, and the flash sync on this camera is X and 1 60th of a second and slower. If you're going to use the flash at 1 60th, use X. If you're going to use it slower, use one the actual shutter time. And in the second video, we'll talk about why it is that shutter speeds have, why the flash sync speed is what it is. The target market for this camera when it was released was the high-end user to professional, semi-professional user. Upon release, the two lens options for this camera were, that you could buy with it were the 58mm f1.2 and the 50mm f1.4. Both of those would have been considered very high-end lenses um, really would have been meant for someone who was very serious about their camera purchase, likely a professional. This has excellent build quality. It is really a very, very solid camera. The quick load feature in this, which we'll see in just a couple moments uh, when we go through all of the camera's features, is awesome. I'm a huge fan of Canon's old quick load feature. Um, they must have had really good reasons to stop including it with cameras, but I think it's really fantastic. And also, there was a metering booster available for this camera, which would have allowed it to read scenes with low light or for macro work. And it just fit onto here, and I don't know how it works. I've never actually seen one. But that would have been a professional level tool, especially for microscopy 
macro photography and things like that. This was made by Canon in Japan in 1966 and 1967. It was preceded by the FP, concurrent with the Pelix QL, and followed by the TL. So let's go over everything that's on this camera as we do. And we'll start here on the top, though technically on the front dish sides with the camera strap lugs. This is where you would attach your camera strap. Film rewind knob and lever to rewind the film and open the film back. Nope, not to open the film back. I take that second part back. Battery check switch, flash cold shoe. You'll notice if you've seen other cameras that there's no dot in the hot shoe here. Like let's say this one here has that little central dot. That means that this camera will not be able to fire a flash if you mount it in the shoe only. The camera will only fire a flash if it's connected to the PC port, which is on the front. We'll see it in just a second. Shutter speed dial, lift the ring, and now you can adjust the uh, uh, ISO. ASA and ISO are the exact same thing. 200 ASA is 200 ISO. Film plane indicator, shutter speed index, film uh, shutter... Uh, Film advance lever, shutter release, shutter lock. So if you lock it, you cannot accidentally take a photo. Frame count window with frame count index. On the front, we have model number, manufacturer, quick load indicator. Here we have the combination self timer and stop down lever. So you can stop down that way and if this lower lever is vertical, it will lock the step down in place and then you reset it by pushing this over to the side and if the camera is not all gummy, it will pop back quickly. If you leave this lever over to the side, then it will, as soon as you release it, pop back into place. Again, if the mechanism isn't super gummy. Self timer lever, rotate it counterclockwise and then when you push the shutter button, the self timer will start counting down. There we go. And so th this, is, this thing's function is solely for the stop down, locking it or unlocking it. Mirror lock up switch. This you can use, rotate it that way to lock up the mirror. We'll talk about that a little bit more in the second video. Flash PC port. On the side, we have the battery chamber. On the camera's back, we have the viewfinder, manufacturer information, serial number, made in Japan. There's a Wikipedia entrance in the references. You can click to ha read some more information about this. Um, there are some production variations in this model. Some of the FTs have the serial number on the top and the made in Japan on the bottom. And I believe that the um, there is some information online as well about telling whether your camera was made in 66 or 67 or a little bit, whether it was early or late, based on where the information on this is, uh, the cameras is engraved. On the camera's bottom, we have the film back release, tripod socket, and film rewind release. On the inside, which we will access by lifting up this lever here, and turning it to pop open the film back. We have the film cassette chamber, film guide rails right here. These inner rails help keep the film flat with the help of the film pressure plate, which we'll see in a second. The outer rails keep the film from moving up and down as it travels. A couple of guide pins to guide the film smoothly onto the film take up sprocket right here, which prevents the film from being pulled backwards into the camera. And also as the film is advanced, turns to help the film pull, be moved smoothly through the camera quick load uh, take up spool, leader index mark here, that little red thing, quick load holder right there with a couple of rolling rollers here that help keep the film sandwiched up against the sprocket, film pressure plate to keep the film flat, and then this cassette spring right here keeps the film cassette oriented properly when it's in the cassette area. So some things not to do with your Canon FTQL. 
don't store the camera with the shutter ready to fire. Everything in here is mechanical, it's clockwork, so when you advance the film and arm the shutter, you're putting tension on a bunch of springs. And if you leave them, especially this camera, which is what, it's 2020, let's call that upper 50s year, years old right now, as of today. Uh, if you leave tension on those 50 plus year old springs, they can be fatigued and they can either weaken it, throwing off your shutter timing, affecting the lens, the mirror's ability to, to, to snap back into place, or they can break, rendering, rendering your camera useless unless it's repaired. And getting one of these repaired is increasingly hard because all of the cameras now of this model are getting old. So before you're done using it for the day, or when you're done using it, activate the shutter because wasting, even if you have, even if you have film in here, wasting a single frame of film is cheaper than having this repaired if the shutter stops working. Also, don't touch the shutter curtain or the mirror inside of here. If you touch the shutter curtain, especially if you accidentally trigger it at that time, you can brick your camera by ruining your shutter. If you touch the mirror, your finger oils can cause the silver to tarnish, which can impair your ability to focus and impair the camera's ability to meter. Don't let your camera get, uh, get wet. These aren't weather sealed. The internal components can rust and that will ruin your camera. Don't leave your camera in your car because heat can cause the lubricating oils to get very thin and then get to places they shouldn't be. And when they get back to their proper viscosity, then they uh, will not allow your camera to work properly, especially on the aperture leaves here. Uh, oil on aperture leaves will really mess up the lens's function. Also, if your, car, your camera gets really cold in the winter, those lubricating oils will get gummy like they have in this camera and a breakdown and then some of the functions won't work properly. And another thing is that even leaving your camera in your car for a few minutes to pop into a rest area or something like that is an easy way to come out to a broken window and no camera. So even if you're just leaving your car for a few minutes, take your camera with you. Don't store your camera in a plastic bag or box because water can permeate that plastic and it can cause fungus to grow on the lens optics and mildew to grow in the, in the camera covering, making the camera smell really musty, which is not great when you hold it up to your nose to take a picture. If you are gonna store it in a plastic bag or box, make sure you have a rechargeable desiccant pack. That's not the kind that come with, uh, with clothes or with a camera lens that you buy brand new. A rechargeable one is one you can put into the oven. And uh, one that you buy, get with a product you buy, you do not want to put into the oven. So look for rechargeable ones if you do plan on keeping this in something like a hard plastic case. And just remember that your Canon FTQL is a precision tool and should be handled with care and respect. And as long as you take care of your camera, your camera will take care of you. So this was the first video. In the second video, we're gonna take a look at all of the different functions and talk about how to use them so that you can use this camera most effectively to take photos. Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about checking these every couple of days and answering questions. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, and if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. One last thing, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I gotta get up, Steinbeck. I have to turn off the camera. <laughs>